I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. And for this episode, it is all about guest outtakes. We decided to um, pull together some of the different snippets from a variety of interviews and guests that we've had um, over the past, I guess, eight or nine months. So you're going to be hearing from, in order, Dandelion Dreaming, who is a writer and reader of fan fiction, Winchester's Queen, who is a reader and devotee and just all around great human in terms of cheerleading various writers all over AO3, my husband Ted, who is a great companion when it comes to my convention adventures, and MJ, who you will know as Thoughts Like a Minefield. So here we go. Can I just ask, jumping back, when you originally mm-hmm. started watching Supernatural and you were living in London, did mm-hmm. you not have cats at the time? Because I know you have cats now. But I feel like if you'd had cats at the time, you wouldn't have been so freaked out by the show because you'd be used to weird random noises <laughs> that occur in the house by cats. And you'd be like, no, it's probably fine. Yeah, no, I definitely didn't have cats. I did have um, random flatmates. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but- but that wasn't the same. It was more like a real sense of, I think what it does, I, 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 my personal belief is that um, we're all clairvoyant. It's, it's, it's literally a, a very natural thing, a supernatural thing, a natural thing. We just yeah. haven't had, we haven't explored it completely. So when you watch things like this, you just become more aware of your, intu- especially if it's late at night and then you go to bed. Mm-hmm. I think your intuition and your senses become more alert and you're looking for it, you become aware of it. And then yeah. if you don't know what to do with that, it starts freaking you out. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, but, yeah, no, there were no cats. And, and also animals do absorb some of the psychic energy or they or they freak you out more by staring at things <laughs> that aren't there. <laughs> I was just kind of more thinking, like, if I've watched, the, there aren't many supernatural episodes that have made me feel really uncomfortable apart from the ones with the clowns. I don't know those ones. Um, <laughs> but, like, I any of the ones that made me uncomfortable, if I like hear any random noises or anything afterwards, I'm like, that's the cats. You know, like I just completely brush it off because I'm so used to the weird and wonderful noises and just things that cats do that are unexplainable, including staring at corners for hours (laughs) on end. I have one of my cats is currently downstairs. We bought a new box of treats and um, she's going to guard it with her life. She won't leave. She just keeps sitting (laughs) next to where the treats are. Just like, no, it's fine. I'm just going to stay here. No, I don't need to nap or eat or do anything else. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna watch this box for a while. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Of course the fat yeah. lad is here. He's never not here. Yeah, of course. He's here. Um yeah, no pen, um, pen uh my what are my cats it's called pen dragon. And earlier pen was came in, I was having a shower and he came in freaked out like huge, you know, in their eyes, their pupils are blown. Yeah. Just looking at me like, I've just seen something terrible. And I was like, (laughs) shit, like, did I not lock the front door when I came home earlier? Is someone in the house? Like, what could it be? You know, something fallen? Mm -hmm. Is your sister terrorizing you? Um, (laughs) But as far as I can tell, it was nothing except maybe he was a bit hungry. Mm. Well, (laughs) They're nothing if not drama queens, though, are they? I starve. Mother, I starve. You haven't fed me yeah. for a thousand years. Yeah. I think perhaps he was scared that that we're, he was going to be left alone again because there's no one home last night. He was like, Oh, bless abandoned. him. Mom, you have returned. Yeah. Please never leave again. Yeah, exactly. Oh, bless. Um, and I wanted to ask you, what's your pronoun preference um is it she her she her they them uh she her usually okay okay um mine is she her and for carly i'm they they them them. okay awesome Awesome. i'm I'm still practicing they them yeah Um, Yeah, but i got a lot of practice in when i got my kitten because for three weeks i did not know her (laughs) sex 
And so <laughs> instead of assuming what it was, I just called her they them for three weeks and everybody was like what's going on I said I'm practicing pronouns <laughs> that's the greatest you can't offend a cat I love that what is your kid's <laughs> name we saw like a paw uh, and some ears oh her name is Gaia oh, um, which it. is the Greek goddess of the earth I always like to go for mythological names um and she's a little what's called a ghost tuxedo, long hair. And she looks like the typical tuxedo, except she has very faint um, tabby markings. Oh. And that's where the ghost comes in. Okay. Oh, that's so, so cute. She's now, really adorable. Kristen, did you get, did you get this little lovely, not too long after? Cause I, I, I know you had also like lost a, um, a baby. I did actually. Too. Yeah, yeah, in last June, I lost my 20 year old cat. Mm. And oh, literally a week to the day after she died, my neighbor knocked on my door with a towel bundled up. Oh. And she said, I know you just lost your baby, but I found this one in the window well of one of our basement apartments in my complex. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long it's been there. Um, and it's really, really scared. And so she opened the towel and there was this little tiny kitten and she could have been more than two months old. Um, and it may be even a month and a half and she was skin and bones and she was filthy. And, um, so I took the towel and once I opened the towel, man, she ran off and hid <laughs> and I didn't see her for hours. And I had, mm -hmm. um, and she went and hid under my bed and got like up into the box spring. <laughs> um, and so I lured her out with, uh, um, videos of, uh, cats meowing. Oh, yeah. and I was able to feed her and, for three weeks, she was very, very timid and wouldn't come. Uh, she'd come near me, but wouldn't come up to me. Okay. Um, and then she, one day, she, one, one evening, she came up to me and actually sniffed me and rubbed up against my leg. And so I just put my hand down and she kind of rubbed up against my hand and I started petting her. And once that happened, it was game over. She Aww. was all over me. <laughs> and, um, That's lovely. and, so, and so I decided to keep her cause I was first, I thought I'd foster her, but mm -hmm. it, that, that of course didn't happen. Everybody was like, nah, you'll keep her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so. cute. Yeah. And they're such great yeah. company, aren't they? So that's, that's, that's oh. nice. I'm glad. I love animals, but I've had cats all my adult life because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I always live in apartments. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah who wants to walk a dog <laughs> well exactly. i mean i'd rather have a, i wouldn't mind walking dog i just rather have a yard yeah. so that they can have yeah. those <laughs> right 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 yeah no i'm i'm total cat cat lady all the way i just i'm i'm cat 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 <laughs> <I'm> absolutely <laughs> cat person. you might hear you might hear meows from my end or more accurately mike thumps from my end because mm -hmm. one of my cats is on my desk now because uh. how dare i do anything that doesn't involve him <laughs> in my face all the time. Right. So he's sitting here because where, where's the best place that you could sit apart from right in front of the screen I need to look at? Because you're mm -hmm. just the best. Oh, <laughs> aren't they great pretty. at that? Computers, books, papers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So, where is yeah. the most inconvenient place he can be? <laughs> that's where he'll be. Right. And, and Gaius literally has to be right in front of my face. And so you might hear me out and you might hear her bump against me. And um, uh, she's being awfully quiet right now, but we'll see how long that lasts. Okay. No, that's so. great. We, we never, I, I never mind when there's a, when there's a cat, cat intermission. <laughs> <for something. laughs> Jinx attends most of our podcast recordings, but he usually naps. Aww. Yeah. yeah. He usually sleeps. So. so your cat's got such a lovely, like lovely mythological name, and that's so great. And he's called Jinx because he was a girl when we bought him and and then he grew balls and he mm. jinxed us. <laughs> so that's why you're jinxy. Oh, that's, that's why you jinxy fat boy. Oh. Easy it is. Very cool. I did have to Google who the tenth doctor was. I was like, 
I was pretty sure I knew which one it was, but I was like, uh, just going to double check. Which one? Which one is it? Because David, David Tennant. Tennant. Okay, awesome. Okay, yeah, yeah. Him I know from He's like just... Jessica Jones and some other stuff. So yeah, I but I've never, I haven't watched a lot of Who, but I know that he was one of the doctors. I just didn't know which one. Okay. Yeah, I have T-shirts that say uh, uh, Ten will always be my doctor. <laughs> I actually have a T-shirt that has Ten and Rose. In Gustav's Klimt, the kiss, oh, the right, painting, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so, and so that famous painting, but it's ten and rose in the face. Oh, okay. Aww. Yeah, it's a really cute T-shirt. Nice. I like that. That's nice. I I started watching with my other half. Um, I like I started watching with Matt Smith. I didn't see any of the David Tennant stuff. Uh, yeah. The new who is fun. I suggest everybody take a look at it. Now, is that something that you can like, do you have to have a lot of background on the show to just like jump into any random season or do you, as long as you know, understand Um, the premise of it, is that fine? Or is there a lot of, yeah, it's just, I mean, the basic premise of it in the new who they don't really talk about the old show much so Mm -hmm. you can get away with just starting with the ninth doctor Mm -hmm. um and the basic premise is this doctor who has this machine that time travels around the universe and um jumps back and forth and saves people and then dies and regenerates Mm -hmm. yeah and the that's the tardis right is that the yes Yes, the infamous tardis yes okay okay and yeah i i think i know the basics but yeah no yeah yeah so yeah so yeah, a little more so, complicated than Supernatural. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> to be fair, though, I would say it has kind of a, a similar a similar premise in that they have it. It's like a little bit Monster of the Week kind of thing with mm-hmm. the sort of overarching plot that goes through it. So like early Supernatural, but it's there's a lot more stuff to remember. Mm. Yeah, it's a and there's Big Bad always, and another similar similarity is that there's a lot of dying and coming back to life <laughs> just, just in the in doctor who they come back as a different person mm. maybe that's the so, formula yeah. then for being on for so long is you just die and keep coming back i mean supernatural better for 15 and how many doctors are are we in now 13 okay um and uh um total but this current doctor is a 12th doctor and so i know that's confusing um and but the thing is is that yeah it's been since 1963 so Mm -hmm. almost 30 years but it's not been on the air the entire time since then it took years breaks Mm -hmm. in between i think the longest was like eight years um 10 years something like that so um the early doctors were on and then it stopped with, I don't even remember, but, and then it started back up with the new who in 2005. Okay. Yeah. Same year as, um, supernatural actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah, either end of our country takes a little bit more than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm, you're used to drives from when you were younger. Yeah. yeah. My parents, we would make a drive from, well, from Maryland down to Florida, which is about a 14 hour drive. Oh my and, God. Um, but yeah, we were going to Disney world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. That's too long. <laughs> that's My guy, that's too long. That's but, like, what do you do for 14 hours in a car? Okay. And this is before, you know, um, tablets and cell phones. And we had a, a map to look at and we would try to figure out where, how far, how, what state we're about to cross into. And it it entertained us. We were simple back then. Um, and of course we also brought a dog with us that, that made the trip extra fun. Yeah. Uh, but we never we didn't do any hotels. My parents just drove in shifts all the way down and all the way back. Yeah, and me oh, not being a person no. that enjoys driving all that much has made like road trips especially interesting for Ted. So the Charlotte one, of course, I was like, well, I have motivation to drive because <laughs> I'm going to go and meet, you know, Jensen. So I was like, okay, I could do this. But um, then you had to get into my car that has absolutely no visibility whatsoever. Yeah. So he has um, limo black. Yeah, he has tint on his windows. 
It, it's very dark tint. Very nobody can see into the car kind of tint. Yeah, but why? Uh, I have heat issues, and I try to keep the uh, car cool. Oh, I see. I see. That's that's illegal over here. I think it, it's illegal here unless you have a I an eye doc an eye doctor that can write you up a a, a reason why you need it. And oh, I see. Apparently, this doctor never never gives that out, and I guess he's got a soft spot for me because he wrote one up for me and he titled me as being photophobic. Oh, right. Yes, photophobic. Okay. All right. It sounds like I'm terrified of the sun. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. And that's legitimate, actually. I call him I call him my little vampire yeah. sometimes because I'm, it's like he doesn't want to be in the sun because of his MS and stuff and the heat issues that I, I seek out any any shade I can find. <clears throat> yeah, no, I I can get on board with that. I can get on board with that. But it's horrible driving with that. <laughs> First of all, when you're not that, you know comfortable of a driver and the car is a little bit bigger than your own car that you it's usually still drive. A little hatchback. And then when you're driving at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, the front window is not tinted. And I told her the most important thing yeah. on Don't the road the back. is in front of you. <laughs> I was like, what? Once That's you get on the highway, you got nothing to worry about. And the car beeps at you every time you go to change lanes. If there's a car in your way. And have you considered I, becoming a driving instructor, Ted? I think you'd be really successful at that, to be honest. Yeah, no, just just out the front, mate. Just don't worry about the sides, don't worry about the back, just what's in front of you. Yeah. Good lord. And if you hear I know some how sirens to drive. behind you, then you gotta realize, okay, like we, we got something going on behind us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not- but we don't know because we can't see. So no. let's just wing it. I Which honestly did not realize not the tint was this dark when I first got it because I don't have it on the car yet. I went to the shop. Mm. They put it on. As soon as I walk up to my car, I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> I work at night. I work at night and I can't see out these windows at nighttime. Uh, I actually, oh, no. when I get to work, I have to roll the windows down. So I make sure I don't roll over somebody when I turn into the parking lot. Yeah, you didn't so know about that, so, no. <laughs> but that's that's what I yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna. <laughs> but you get used to we're it. We're gonna swiftly move on from that. <laughs> no, I. Well, it's kind of like the way you and your mom talked to me about going to Italy, and mm-hmm. you have not made Italy sound I've, I've at, not all made it sound at all. Not <laughs> feeling at all. Sleeping on a like a marble floor with a mat. What? And it's no because heat. it's because of the lovely people you get to spend time with when you're there. You that's have to turn the heat off it. at night. Yeah. That's what makes it worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes it worth it. Oh, that's a whole. But other that's off topic. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Right. Now we could go off topic. What? What do you mean? You sleeping on the floor? What? Uh, you got to. Nobody tell told me that going to Italy involves sleeping on the floor. Cause I've always wanted to go to Italy. Cause I want to go to Rome. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like a bit of a history buff. Mm-hmm. So I like, have no interest in any, like your food is beautiful. I'm sure I can't eat any of it. Cause <laughs> I'm a giant baby. Um, I just want to go to Rome and like see like the Colosseum and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And nobody told me that sleeping on the floor was a part of well, that. Well, that's that's a part Question of it mark. when you end up staying at family that doesn't have a lot of space. So I, I don't. Uh, know, I didn't actually sleep on the. I didn't sleep on the floor. Well, I, I heard a lot of talk about You're how thinking about it's mom all when marble she was, floors. Yeah, so it's and cold. So it's gonna be cold. You can slip really easily. Mm-hmm. You go to the bathroom bare feet. It's not gonna be fun mm-hmm. in the winter time. Mm-hmm. Um. When we went one one time, my mom and I went, and it was around Christmas time, and it was very cold, so cold that in the house we wore coats, and then we would go outside and we would take the coats off because they didn't have <laughs> um, like central heating or whatever. So my my grandparents' house is really like marble stone, so it just holds all the you know it holds all the cold in. Um, and I think my mom had gotten. I think she ended up getting bronchitis or something. Like when she came back and she went to the doctor, it was either bronchitis or some type of like pneumonia she had had afterwards because of the, of how cold it was in the house. Um, And yeah, I know I'm making it sound so great. And so then they would use like propane heaters. And um, then my 
grandparents were like, well, we're going to turn it off because we don't want you to suffocate or, or like asphyxiate on like, you know, the fumes or something. So we're going to turn, we're going to turn this stuff off. So it's like seven layers of blankets and oh my God. yeah. Yeah. But I still, I still fondly loved that time because I got <laughs> to spend Christmas with family that I'd never spent time with. So I equate all of the struggles of a convention to going to Italy because of the people that you get to spend time with. So that's what oh, makes okay. it work. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice, though. So can I can I just ask you staying off topic for a brief second more? Is the whole is that like because I know in Spain, like everything's like white and like stone and stuff Mm -hmm. to sort of try and reflect the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. So it's cool inside. Mm -hmm. So is that just like a natural byproduct of because Italy's like equator town and it's hot. Mm-hmm. So is that just like a natural byproduct of that? Like it's cool in the day, but it's fucking freezing on a nighttime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much, oh, no. pretty much. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm nodding my head. I've never been there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. We don't the in the UK the the stuff we learn about like Europe countries tends to be like the ones that are closest to us. Mm-hmm. So that's like Spain. <laughs> most of these spain everybody goes to spain if they're feeling adventurous they go to greece <laughs> but you don't hear so much about italy other than like what you learn in history yeah um, so i was like i know how this works in spain is this also a thing in italy yeah and they'll do okay. like the where everything like shuts down um like things are shut down on sundays so you it, like if you need anything you better get your stuff on saturday because pretty much a lot of the stores are going to be shut down and then people just kind of like stop doing everything for a few hours in the middle of the afternoon um they actually like, got what, they become american they, the they become american, <laughs> uh, um but yeah like it's, it's hot really over hot. That. if it's really hot they'll like shut like all the windows get shut and it's like nobody does anything and you just lay down for like a couple of hours and just like try not to overheat yourself when it's really hot so between yeah, summer I, and winter i pretty much got every experience um that i needed to when i was over there <laughs> you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna ask d if that's the same thing they do in australia because it's fucking hot there mm-hmm. do they also do the afternoon siesta thing where mm-hmm. everybody just goes it's too hot guys just sit down <laughs> no, no, just nobody do nothing just sit and try not to die I'm going to ask her if that's a thing that they do over there. We don't get that in the UK. It doesn't get that hot. Okay, so this is normally the part of any given podcast where we would go, hey, our sponsor today is, but we ain't sponsored. So we just have some uh, causes, some charities that we'd like to um, bring to your attention, point you in the direction of if you feel able or willing to donate to them we have three main sort of causes inverted commas that we're uh, uh, promoting feels like the wrong word but like signposting highlighting Mm -hmm. if you will Mm -hmm. so the first one is um to do with the conflict in ukraine the russian invasion unlawfully of ukraine so we would just like to draw your attention to world central kitchen which as it sounds like is um you know helping to feed people that are affected by this conflict um you know, although it's dropped out of the media quite a bit now, there's still a hell of a lot of people in the Ukraine that are trapped, that are cut off, you know, that are struggling for food and water and basic supplies. So that's what that charity is there for. We have Kids Save, which, again, as the name suggests, is looking out for the children that are affected um, by this. I mean, conflict feels like the wrong word. It's, you know, it's un- an unlawful invasion. But yeah. 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 Kids save. And then we have, if you don't want to sort of, if you don't feel you can or want to commit to just one single charity, we also have a link to the global giving page for the Ukraine crisis relief fund, which obviously is then split between various different places that it needs to go. It's sort of the global equivalent of a GoFundMe or a just giving page. So we have that. And then for those of you that are in the US and oh Lord, we know it's hard right now. We do. So we have the um, Mums Demand Action, Ending Gun Violence, um, the Sandy Hook Promise, Advocate for Gun Regulation in Your State, wherever you may be. We have the American Civil Liberties Union, which is, you know, basic human rights. Come on, people. Like, 
I, it, it doesn't feel like it should be this hard, but somebody needs to give your government a kick up the ass and be like, mm-hmm. hey, it's not this hard. You're making it harder than it is. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, vote.gov, you know, look up the voting regulations in your state, in your area, find out what you need to do, be informed, be prepared, because that is the best way to enact any kind of change. And that doesn't just go for the US, that goes for the UK, anywhere else. Educate yourself. Know what you need to do so nobody can catch you out. Last cause, definitely not least, LGBT, LGBTQ plus people. My folks, we are under attack. There's no easy way to say it. There's no nice way to say it. People want us dead, yo. It's really heavy in the US. It's coming in the UK, you know, and it's fucking hard. There's no one cause fits all for this. There's nothing particularly global. And to be honest, I didn't really want to signpost to any, you know, causes that are fighting against this. I want to bring this down more to people. You know, we're not just, we're not a statistic. Everyone's a person. So the causes I want to signpost are Switchboard LGBT in the UK and the Trevor Project in the USA. And they are both um, services where you can reach out, you can be connected to people to talk to, you know, it's hard. We need to come together, guys. So if you need to talk to somebody, if you need help, if you are not safe where you are, these charities will help you, you know, reach out to them, even if it's just someone to talk to, even if it's just someone to go, this fucking sucks. If you need that help, reach out as well. For anyone outside of the US and the UK, I'd like to draw your attention to the Trevor Project. Again, they have resources for international LGBTQ plus people, youth. We know that as much as it's hard in our countries, it's a hell of a lot harder in some other countries and it's not easy to come out. It's not easy to be safe. So take a look at that link for some resources, some places to go for help, some ideas of how to keep yourself safe. So again, it's not a sponsor. We wish we had a nice fun sponsor to bring you, but we know that it's hard and we just want to point you in the direction of help for others if you can give it and help for yourself if you need it. So back to the podcast, I guess. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for coming. You're a legend. (laughs) 100%. Sandra was like, I've reached out. And I was like, you've done what now? (laughs) Holy cow. Okay, cool. Good. I'm like, you said yes. I love this. I, I love meeting people and talking to people about the things that we love and, um, you know, sharing ideas and stories. It's like, that's the yeah. thing I love the most about fandom. Oh, good. Well, then this is going to, this is going to be fun. So we're going to, now, should we call you MJ or are, are you yeah. good with Yep. Okay. All right. We'll do MJ. Yeah, MJ. that's actually, that's my name. That's the name I go by professionally. And my dad, it's my, it's my actual, it's my initials of my real name, but like okay. of my given name, but my, my dad started calling me that when I was like two years old. Um, and especially once I got later into life, it stuck because my first name is kind of like a cutesy name. So, mm-hmm. um, and then my middle name, which is what the combination is, is complicated. So. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. So I was kind of like, well, you know what? Let's just, you know, when I finally started like professionally, that was like, I just only went by MJ from mm-hmm. then on. So um, I still have, you know, friends and like old, old friends from high school and who still um, use the names that they used to use for me, whatever nicknames and formations of those names. But, um, for the most part, everybody calls me MJ. So, so I'm just doing the intro. You're doing the guest intro, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have so I have so many dogs out. Oh, MJ, <laughs> it's unreal. She doesn't put anything in one place. Everything's in a different file, yeah, we, and then I have to have all the different yeah, files. Everything open. in Google Docs, and I do way too many <laughs> folders, and yeah, and so it, it becomes a thing. 
Yeah. And then she moves things and she doesn't tell me that she's moved them. And I'm like, baby, what's this? And she's like, oh yeah, no, it's in this whole new folder. You didn't know it was a thing. <laughs> to be fair, I have tried not to move anything for quite a while. So we we have, you know, I've, I've tried to keep that out. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. true. <laughs> We'd we'd love to get you back and um, get your opinion on Jensen and the boys if you're interested oh, in that. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I, so I have written a couple Soldier Boy fix. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> I wrote, and then, <laughs> and then I also wrote Butcher, obviously. But then mm-hmm. right now I'm working on, a, what what um, Glass Jacket was referring to as Butcher Boy, uh, mm. and. Hello. Um, yes. <laughs> Hello. Um, and then, <laughs> and I also, so I started this one this week that I was like, where did he, like, you know, this is how <laughs> it always starts, right? Because I was like, where did he go after he left the Legends mm. place? And, you know, how, where did, you know, he got his hair cut and a shave and whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, before, before he went to the Countesses. And so I found this, um, barbershop in East Harlem that's been there since the 50s and this guy's like a legend of his own right so I was Mm -hmm. like yeah so I'll send him there and he knows the guy and whatever so um I also um had a little fun writing the legend himself which was fun (laughs) because he's so funny I I love love Paul yeah that's great yeah yeah so I'll probably be posting that in the next you know week probably um Good. the butcher boy thing is probably just going to be like something that i'll i'll just hammer out as soon as i get the uh get the idea down for sure because yeah. i was kind of like what in what world you know until we saw this episode mm-hmm. of this week i was like in what universe would they be in the same room like that you know what i mean mm-hmm. and now i'm like well they would obviously do that <laughs> 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 what we saw this week i'm like yeah really, they're like besties now so um yeah. <laughs> i wasn't really sure what to think until this week but um, um, yeah now i can totally see it it's really, really clear um, oh yeah absolutely <laughs> i started watching um big sky too mm-hmm. uh i'm yeah. not really sure i'm not yeah, sure i, I, I feel like I it's love more it, but but I, I I like trying to see sort of like to me it's just Dean without all of the baggage like a little bit like of a lesser version like you know like a little bit down there you know like yeah carefree Dean as as carefree <laughs> as Dean might have been in an alternate universe that's how I look yeah. at it like AU Dean without like all yeah. that stuff yeah yeah, yeah but I also feel like they're gonna bring the pain at some point because oh definitely because they, they to, dropped like, all that grieving stuff in. oh yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's had to go coming. to a grief counselor or something. I'm and sure, there's a whole like, thing about daughter was probably going after his. He's moved to be next to his ex and the daughter. Yeah, there's going to yeah. be all sorts. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be stuff. Well, <laughs> probably like a- no matter no matter what they do with a with a grieving character, it will not be as bad as what they made Jared do with Walker. Mm. So disappointing. Mm. Oh no, this this is where yeah. MJ's like, I love Walker. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh no, I haven't watched it. I have no I, I don't yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't watched it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, well I mean, that's yeah, we're all as, we've all grieved it. So. <laughs> as, as, right, the resident, right. as the resident Sam Mortal and you know, Sam fan human, I am the only person out of our group chat that didn't make it through the first season of Walker and hasn't watched any of season two because I love that man and he's such a good actor. And they just they fucked it. I don't know what they did, but oh. like you ruined it. You just, it's awful. I hate it. It's awful. That's so disappointing. Yeah. Don't worry. Whatever you think they might be shaping up for Jensen and a grieving character, it won't be as bad as Walker was. It'll be fine, guys. It'll be fine. <laughs> it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You'll be looking at it going, that's, that that seems healthy. That's all right. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, that's fine. Nobody's having hallucinations of, dead wives oh lord that's... oh no that's like <laughs> that's like walking dead that's like rick and what's her name oh Laurie. oh Lori. Yeah, Lori. yeah yeah fuck her i hated her <laughs> no no that's a, that's a legitimate thing that happens in walker because jen plays his deceased wife 
and she just fucking pops yeah. up every now and then. Or she did in the episodes I watched, just to be oh, weird hell. and make it weird. Uh, oh, horrendous. horrendous. <laughs> just to be weird and make it weird. <laughs> Sandra, am I wrong? Because I'm no, not, wrong, you're not wrong. No, no, I, no, I, you're not wrong. No, not at all. Do you no. watch it too? I watched it like here and there. I, I know a show's not grabbing me when like I. I'm just not paying attention. Like, and I was like, I was yeah. really trying. I was trying really hard. And I'm like, I just need to stop because it's just, it's not, it's not working. It's not working for me. So I watched the yeah. one episode like in full that Jensen directed, but that was, that was the last one in a long time that I think I, I watched and I haven't watched since. And I know it, I think they had the season finale. I think it was yes. this Today. week. Yeah. So I don't. Yes. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately Mm, that's a bummer yeah yeah you know when you're like looking for new content looking for Mm -hmm. new you know things to be excited Mm -hmm. about it's like yeah Yeah. that's a bummer we're gonna cross fingers yeah for carly that something (laughs) it happens soon or jared that they can be like yay well (laughs) they haven't mentioned that it's getting renewed for third season and he's not in I think oh, it is, isn't it? Fucking yeah, hell. I saw that today. Yeah. I saw yeah. that today. Oh, yeah. for fuck's sake. Yeah. Come on, the CW is going to do that, Carly. They've got to right now. They've It's, it's the cash cow. They've they've, they're got, not going to. They've got, walk, they've got Walker Independence. It doesn't they're not going to make any... They're not going to make any less fucking money just because Jared's face yeah, isn't in it. It doesn't matter. I promise you, nobody's watching Walker <laughs> even though his face is in it. <laughs> it's like, it'll be fine. Oh. Um, no, I get to have more fan guilt. I'd be like, he's done three seasons of this show now that I don't fucking watch. <laughs> Great. Oh, oh, goodness. Yeah. All right, MJ. Well, well now that we're done ranting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm done complaining about all the things Jared's doing that suck. We will let you go, but we thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to reach out to us, email us at idlinginthimpala at gmail.com. On Twitter, we are idling in the letter D Impala. To reach out to me or to read some of my work on AO3, you can find me under Drasna, D-R-A-S-N-A. On Twitter, I'm S. Kyle Writes, S-K-Y-L-E-W-R-I-T-E-S. And if you'd like to read some of my original fiction, you can visit my website at sandrakyle.com. Yay, well done. She had to read that. I know she had to read that. <laughs> so um, I'm the agent of chaos and all the things, but in this one specific area, I'm very organized. So if you want to reach out to me, I am Carly Karma on AO3 and Twitter. So that's Kilo, Alpha, Romeo, Lima, Echo, Echo, and then Karma as you spell it normally. Same profile picture in both places in case you think, hey, I wonder if there's two people out there with a weird spelled name. Same profile picture. It's probably me. So, you know, reach out, send us an email, reach out to us on Twitter. If you've got any fic recommendations, you've got any things you want to hear us talk about, hear our opinions on, reach out, let us know what's going on. Thank you very much for listening, guys, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.